Uh, back again for another video. Thanks for joining. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the car already. I'm uh, heading out uh, to get another night out under the stars. Um, I have to also admit that it, I'm a, about a night early. I did plan on going out tomorrow night, but tonight seemed a bit iffy, but it's cleared up a lot earlier, so I'm heading out. And uh, I'm going to a place that I did visit about a week ago, uh, but by the time I got there, it clouded over. So uh, here we go. We're going, we're going to go for a second chance try for, for, for this, uh, this place. Uh, main goal though uh, for this for tonight and for this video is to head out and uh, do some star trails at this new location. Um, so I want to take you through uh, how I set up my shot and how I shoot and settings and stuff like that so you know how to uh, I guess gather all your images for your star trails uh, and then once you've got all your images uh, from from shooting for the night, uh, then I'll uh, I'll do another video in how I go about processing my star trails, uh, uh, with because uh, there are many other ways or many ways uh, of doing sort of star trails and different programs and different ways, uh, but I'll take you through the my way. It's pretty easy. There is a more in depth way, uh, which uh, I probably won't be going through because it does take a long time. But uh, I'll show you the sort of quicker way that I use. Uh, the software itself, though, is is free, so uh, I'll uh, mention about it uh, a bit later on. Uh, but yeah, for now, we're just going to focus. We're going to got a long drive ahead of us. Uh, fingers crossed, it stays clear. And um, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you guys soon when, uh, when we get out to our location. Alright guys, how are you going? We're finally here after a bit of a drive. Uh, as you can tell, I'm nice and rugged up. Sorry for I got some bad audio, but uh, yeah, look, it's freezing. Uh, well, freezing from, for, for us here in Queensland anyway. It's, uh, I think when I pulled up, it's dropped down to about six or seven degrees and it's still early, early in the night. So the, the morning, I think she's gonna get down real low single digits, but um, yeah. As I'd hoped, it's uh, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, we're at a new location. It's uh, just to uh, your left, uh, just beyond where the light is at the moment. Uh, there's, uh, I found this uh, just by chance, uh, looking around uh, different sort of places on, uh, on Google Maps and uh, came across uh, a place where there's, where there's a, uh, an old hut. And uh, it's got a, nice character to it so I straight away when I saw it I was like I have to shoot here so um, I've done did as much research as I could online without being here um, as I said uh, on the drive uh, I, I did come here last week uh, but by the time I got here cloud already pushed in and sort of uh, buggered up the whole evening but um, uh, a week later here we are new moon was uh, last night I think it was so uh, essentially now once again we've got a whole night of uh, moonless sky and clouds have pushed out and it's uh yeah it's fantastic but um going to be shooting star trails tonight um this is something that i think when any when anyone sees a star trails shot online or they they, they definitely uh 
take notice. It's definitely a very, uh, uh, I guess, uh, attractive way to shoot uh, the stars. Uh, obviously, shooting the Milky Way is always great, but uh, if you're not shooting the Milky Way core and you've got a clear patch of sky uh, where you can't really see much of the Milky Way, uh, star trails is always a, is a great, great option. So uh, the Milky Way is behind camera at the moment, rising up in the sky. Um, so I'm going to point my camera to the other the other way and shoot the composition of this hut with some star trails. So that's my plan for tonight. Um, as I mentioned, it's uh, it's really cold. Um, it, I think it rained out here a bit earlier, so I'm going to uh, predict that there's going to be some mist uh, brew up a bit later. So I want to try and get my star trails started early because I want to I want to get it in at least at least two and a half to maybe three hours worth of. Uh, uh, taking pictures for, for my star trails. Um, but if you're trying to do this by yourself and do it for the first time, even just an hour of uh, photo taking is, uh, is going to be sufficient because uh, with star trails, it's not just one long exposure, it's, uh, which you could do, but it's not uh, ideal because after that one long exposure, if you didn't do some settings correctly and it didn't work out, then you've wasted a long time. So. Uh, the best way to do it is to do uh, multiple shorter exposures. Uh, me personally, I just do 30 second exposures. Um, you could do a little bit faster, but uh, I just do 30 second exposures and I just let it run for two and a half to three hours and whatever sort of frames I get of that, that's what I use for my stacking for, uh, for my star trails. Um, but I've got a lens warmer on because uh, I'm going to be leaving it out in this uh, field for a couple of hours. Uh, so this lens warmer will help uh, sort of keep my lens warm so it doesn't fog over and mist up because uh, when you're doing t star trails, that's the one thing that will that will bite you for sure is uh, if you leave it out here long enough and you get a sudden drop in temperature, uh, then your lens can't uh, keep up with that temperature drop. It'll fog over and you'll get a bit of condensation on the front element, which will then uh, bug your, your, your star, star trails or even time lapse, because we can even use these frames that we're gonna be taking for star trails uh, and use them and put them in, in as a, uh, a, a, time, a time lapse as well. So um, if all goes well, you'll probably see that time lapse a little bit later on. But uh, I've got a battery pack on as well. Uh, shooting with a DSLR, uh, I have to put on a battery pack, put two batteries in to give me the uh, longevity of uh, doing two and a half to three hours worth of shooting. Um, if you are lucky enough to have a mirrorless camera that can take a, a battery bank straight into the camera itself to keep it fully charged, uh, which I do plan on getting one day, uh, yeah, doing, you can go up to like, I've seen guys do like seven to eight hour uh, star trails and the longer you do, uh, the the better movement in the stars you get, you get more lines, they get, it's, it just looks much better, but even an hour's worth, you, you'll, you'll still get a great, great outcome. So, uh, so yeah, if you are trying to follow along for, for this tutorial, give it a go, one hour, out in the field, do your, find your composition, let your camera take photos constantly over and over and over again for at least an hour. Uh, because uh, that'll uh, help you for the next part, the next video that I do where we're going to go through and edit those photos. But look, I'll stop yapping now. Uh, I'm going to go over, get my composition sorted, uh, and then I'll take you through some of the settings uh, that, I, that I, uh, I do and the reasons why I do those settings uh, to get the outcome that I want. So uh, let's, uh, let's, go, let's go over the field. guys so uh yeah this is the uh the little hut that i've uh, found through google maps just by chance um i won't say where it is or uh the name of it but uh if you do know the look of it and you re recognize it uh yeah great little place um i have a few ideas on how i want to shoot it um I def I'm, I'm definitely feeling a bit of light painting i don't want it to be uh uh, in shadow uh, and I wanted to play a quite a prominent part in the whole composition of things so um, I'm going to grab my light and I'm probably going to do some 
some like side lighting and, and uh, maybe even uh, pop some bit of warm, warm light uh, inside the uh, hut itself to give a bit of a warm glow as if, as if someone's actually living in there. So um, yeah, I reckon that's gonna be a bit of fun, but uh, I'll do all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing that light painting at the start or, um, or I might leave it right to the end, but uh, yeah, it's a cool looking hut. Looking forward to shooting it, but uh, uh, I'll take you through the settings and, uh, and tell you exactly how I'm gonna uh, set this shot up and how I'm gonna shoot it. All right, guys, so uh, since we last spoke, I have been taking some photos of the, uh, of the hut with uh, using my uh, light to light paint it. So I've done, gone around the, uh, I've gone around the hut, sorry, can't even speak right now, it's starting to get that cold. Uh, went around the hut with my light, uh, lit, lit it from, so, uh, from all different angles. Uh, just a tip, when you, do, when you are light painting, you never try to light your subject uh, straight on, it just doesn't give the, uh, the subject uh, much dimension. Uh, it's always better to light it from the sides or from a 45 degree angle, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, but as you can see on the back of my camera now, I've got a 15 second shutter speed at F5, ISO of only 500. So with an ISO of 500 uh, and F5, it gives me uh, a pretty much clean image. So if I, this camera, my 5D Mark III, can shoot at ISO 500, no problem. But F5 also helps with uh, sharpness of the uh, of the images, so the uh, hut is going to be nice and sharp in, in the foreground. Uh, the 15 seconds is just to uh, is to uh, I guess give me some time to move around the uh, the the hut itself with the light and to uh, light paint it from all different directions and stuff. So I did a couple of frames, which I'll take you through now. Uh, this was my last frame I did. Uh, it's, it is sort of uh, front on, but this one was mainly to uh, highlight the roof. I was finding it hard to sort of uh, get, get the roof itself uh, all lit up. So I had to put the, um, I had to put the, uh, the light on quite strong to get the, uh, the uh, roof lit up. So uh, I got that sorted. Uh, then after, before that, I did a nice little light painting uh, underneath the hut from behind just to light up from underneath it because it is raised up off the uh, off the ground a little bit uh, I did go and put my light inside the hut itself uh, and even though it looks all old and ratty inside is actually quite clean and quite neat and tidy so whoever does look after after it on this land uh, does a great job so uh, if you do come here and you do know where it is uh, I guess like myself I was careful uh, getting up there to do that because uh, you do need to respect that this is uh, uh, something of uh, great significance so you don't want to be uh, messing around with it too much so I got the one shot uh, put the light up there got the shot got down and now you know just stay away from it and leave it alone um, and then oh, that was a misfire and so was that uh, this one here is just a bit of more of a downwards light onto it just to see if I can uh, you know, maybe a little bit of the grass in the foreground, I'm, I may use this frame. Um, but I did do this one from the side, a bit of side lighting from the left. Uh, and then a little bit from the right to go on the side of the uh, actual uh, hut itself. And then there was a little little highlight here at the front as well. So I've, just got a, I've got a couple of frames of light painting. Um, but now I just need to focus on getting my shots for my sky. And to my, um, I guess the best way to... Well, I've got you. I'll just take you quickly through it now. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this. So my shutter speed for my sky, because I've already tested it. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna put it on to 30 seconds. I'll put the aperture back to f4, uh, but the ISO I will boost back up to around uh, where are we? 2,500. So what that's gonna do is gonna give me a reasonable. Uh, so it's giving me the 30 second long shutter speed, f4, so my images are going to be sharp, but the ISO up enough to be able to see some stars. Um, I don't want to see too many stars. I don't want to overexpose too many stars. So this is a little pro tip. When you're doing your star trails, uh, try and underexpose your sky a bit 
uh, so you're not getting as many stars in your shot. Uh, what you'll do is uh, you'll get some stars that are bright white. Uh, you can't help that, but others will also, you'll get a bit more reds and blues out of some of the other stars, is, which is what gives you your uh, nice colors in the stars when you do stack them. So uh, it's a little handy tip is to try and find that nice sort of level of uh, underexposure for the sky because um, you can always uh, edit it a little bit later if you want to bring it up or bring it down again uh, after we stack all these photos together. So uh, what I'll do is I'll turn my light off and we will take a shot with these settings. So, if, oops, wake my camera back up. And I also need to now change that back to that. And then I'll turn my light off, give me a second. All right, guys, so we'll take a shot. And then I'll show you, so this is gonna go for 30 seconds and I'll show you uh, how underexposed the stars are to sort of give you a, I guess, a gauge of uh, what we're going for uh, into, uh, into our time, uh, sorry, star trails. All right, so there we go. Now let me just put, bring that back up on screen for you. All right, so that's 30 second exposure. So as you can see, I haven't changed any exposure on my, on my camera here to uh, make it brighter or darker. This is, his, uh, this is how underexposed it is. As you can see, you can still see a whole heap of stars, but if I was to expose as if I was shooting for the Milky Way and wanted to get more detail and brightness out of the core, uh, I would see more stars in the shot than that. So, but this is enough, it's a good little, uh, I guess, patch of stars just over the back of this hut. Uh, I should get a little bit of the South Celestial Pole just on this side here. Oh, sorry, let me just whack my light back on so you can actually see where I'm pointing. So just to the left of the screen, there should be, I should get some nice little circles on this side here. Um, I don't know if I'll get the actual middle of it, but I'll get some nice little bendy sort of uh, star trail. So yeah, I like in this composition. Um, but yeah, that's enough gas bagging for me. I am done my light painting. I'm now just gonna set my camera up and start shooting and let it run. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in around two and a half to three hours. a uh, no bad little rest in the back of the car but uh, there we go there's uh, been three hours let's go on and uh, grab the camera from around the field and uh, just check the back of the camera and uh, everything seems to be uh, seems to be good the uh, lens warmer did its job lens didn't fog up um, I even think I got accidentally got a couple of extra little uh, light painting frames on my walk over there when I was taking the light with me uh, that I might even use in uh, using the uh, final shot. So, but uh, yeah, so that's it. You after you've done your shots, uh, after you know you've left it for you know at least an hour. Like I said, uh, an hour is still going to be good enough time to sort of leave your camera. But uh, I've chosen to leave it for two and a half to three hours. Um, once all you got all your frames, then we're going to uh, head back and put them into Photoshop. So uh, I'll leave the video here. This is uh, the end of this video. Uh, if you want to see the next video where we're going to be putting all these photos that we've taken tonight uh, into Photoshop and put them together, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you've got any questions about uh, the uh, video today or tonight, uh, leave a comment down below, I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can uh, because uh, you want to try and get out there and get your uh, photos uh, ready for the uh, next video when it comes out because we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put them all together and uh, I hope uh, everyone's got to get a chance to get the shots and they've got clear skies. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.